A quick update on my APC back UPS 650 that I modified earlier from a UPS into an inverter. I uh, tried to power load that was apparently too large for it because the uh, fuses on here, there's two 40 amp fuses under there, that red thing in between the wires uh, in parallel. Those fuses uh, failed and uh, the UPS would no longer run obviously. So I went in here and uh, just soldered some wire <clears throat> across the, uh, the fuses right here and uh, I'm going to see how that works out. Uh, it's not uh, not a great idea maybe to bypass the, the fusing. That's, that's your, uh, your safety to avoid a catastrophic failure that would short circuit your batteries. If there's a, a problem in here, maybe if the power transistors fail again or something. But uh, looking at the circuit board, it doesn't look like a very robust circuit board. And uh, I'm pretty sure that the traces would burn off this board long before the battery did anything terrible. So I think I'm uh, satisfied with this. It won't protect other, th other things in the UPS. So if something does go wrong, this will probably be destroyed permanently. But I'll take that risk. So with that, uh, these wires soldered in here. Um, I'll get a close-up of it so you can see. Hopefully it'll work again. There's my rather messy soldering job on there. Um, I just used some pretend wire that I had had on hand. Uh, that should be able to handle the, the 80 amps or so that this thing needs to handle. But uh, I guess I'll see. I have that wire soldered in place of the fuse to repair it. And I uh, have the UPS back together here. And I'm just going to run another, another little test um, with uh, the equipment sitting here on the table just out of curiosity and I thought I'd uh, record this and show you what I'm doing in case somebody's interested. But uh, I have uh, my uh, inverter here connected to this uh, this battery and I also have, uh, this is another project that I was working on a couple of weeks ago, uh, didn't record that, but this is whatever it says on the cover here. Uh, what it ends up being is a battery charger. It's a little bit more complicated than that. You can look up the, the model number DLS45 for more details. But basically, we, it's a 45 amp uh, power supply battery charger. Uh, and I put this little ammeter on it just so I could uh, see what it's doing. Um, works pretty nicely, really. It's a nice battery charger. But uh, so I have that clamped up to the battery here just to give it a little bit more capacity. And my load for this test is going to be this electric heater that I've uh, used in some of my other videos. Uh, if I put this on low, it is about 600 watts, and I've checked with a clamp meter what uh, this UPS draws from the battery at that 600 watt load, and it takes uh, about 60 to 65 amps um, of load through the, uh, the input cables there. So this limits to 45 amps. The remaining 15 will come out of this battery, and uh, basically I have this connected up so that my battery will last much longer and it doesn't damage the battery as much because it doesn't cycle as deeply. So I have, uh, before I turn it on, I have the UPS here, the cover is on so I can't really check temperatures but what I'm going to do is just use my infrared thermometer, uh, put it on the vent where the air is being blown out from the fan and see what temperature the, the unit's getting there but uh, I'll turn this thing on. It doesn't turn on for some reason. There we go. <clears throat> so the UPS is running. I'll put uh, voltage. Um, because it's a modified sine wave and this is not a true RMS meter, it uh, doesn't accurately measure the voltage, but it's somewhere around 115 volts, 13.6 in the battery because it's connected to this thing, which is not just an ordinary battery charger, it's a, a well-regulated power supply. Um, anyway. I could go into details on that, but nobody probably cares. So I'll turn my uh, heater on low. And my voltage here drops. My power supply here is putting out about 45 amps on the meter. And uh, this thing's actually pretty nice. It has a, a fan on it that's temperature controlled, so it only runs after this thing starts warming up. But anyway. I'm going to let this run for a while and uh, see if this UPS actually lasts. I think my previous load test that I had done in the other video was 
400 watts, I think. Uh, this one is 600 watts, so you're looking at uh, 6 squared over 4 squared, um, which is uh, 36 over 16, I guess. So this test is far more stressful than the other one because it's amperage squared that really stresses components. Anyway, so I'll just cut out here and uh, let you know how the test went when it's finished. Alright, well, a little change of plans here. I powered this thing up and after a couple of minutes it uh, started smelling a little bit funny. Uh, nothing too bad, but enough that I was kind of wondering if something was going wrong. So I pulled the cover off, put my uh, thermocouple back on the uh, transistor, and uh, it never really got warm, this transistor. Uh, I mean, 57 Celsius is warm, but it's not a problem. But uh, what I did find in this test um, is that the circuit board itself seems to be a little bit inadequate for this kind of load. Uh, I had mentioned that uh, the current here in that heater is uh, about 600 watts, which is uh, more than the 400 watt load that I tested with in my previous video. And uh, since it's a current squared function for most of the heating loads on here, uh, 600 watts is more than twice as stressful to the components than 400 watts. And uh, at least in this short test, nothing really seemed to be getting excessively hot except the circuit board itself. And uh, I don't have a, a real FLIR uh, thermal camera to use. I just have this, this meter here. But uh, when I'm going over the different portions of the circuit board here above and, and beneath, um, it became obvious, and I better shut this off before I touch it, <clears throat> that, uh, let's see, this strip of wire right here on, this, on the uh, circuit board uh, that runs from the yellow wire underneath that goes to the transformer down here, it runs up through here all the way across and then into this bank of transistors over here. And that was getting very warm, uh, 150 Celsius approximately the strip right on top. The circuit board can take a pretty high temperature, so I don't know that it really would have failed. And uh, if it fails, that can be bad because it it might fuse open. <clears throat> That's one possibility. But another possibility is that since this is a, um, a layered circuit board, I think there's only two layers, top and bottom. It's a pretty cheap circuit board. Uh, that uh, you could potentially burn a hole through the circuit board to the other side. And on the other side of the board, if I can flip it here, it may have something different on the bottom. I can't really see. And uh, if, for example, the top side is battery positive and the bottom side is battery negative, you could get a, a pretty nasty short. So I don't really want to ruin my circuit board. Um, this video is going to end up being a little bit more than I had anticipated. I think what I'm going to do quick is uh, try to beef up this trace across the board, which seems to be the weak point. Uh, I'll just solder a, a wire or something on there to uh, see if I can increase the current carrying capability of it and run this test again. So I'm going to get my soldering iron out and, uh, and I'll be back. You couldn't really see it from the other angle, but uh, from this side I have a flashlight that I'm just shining through the circuit board so you can see the traces on both sides at the same time. Uh, from the, uh, the battery input, which is this uh, yellow connector, if I can point and I can't, it's this yellow connector on the right side there. Uh, going through those two fuses, which are blown, that I now bypassed. Um, there's just a, a pretty thick piece of copper going between all of those. So that's not a problem. Into the transformer, there's those two purple wires. Uh, those are plenty heavy, so that's not a problem. <clears throat> and the output of the transformer comes to uh, this side with uh, a yellow and a white wire. The yellow one, you can see, goes through that very narrow trace and runs all the way across the board on the top and bottom of the circuit board um, over to maybe this angle shows it better <clears throat> yeah there we go so it comes out of there into that connector through the very top side where it says solder side no parts through that little trace all the way over into that big hunk of copper there and uh, that's just way too small the other side of the transformer down here has a lot more copper that connector on the on the right side where it says white one J8 that one should be thick enough I think we can get uh, 
60 amps through that without a problem, but this top one I can't.